guys, it's Stephanie and I wanted to talk about the rest of the books that I read in November. I already did kind of a mini wrap up about the books I had read the first part of the month so this is basically part two of my wrap up. So I have five books to talk about. One of them was nonfiction for nonfiction November and I think I'll start with that one. That was Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, the story of little women and why it still matters. I heard about this book on Kate Howe's channel when she was doing her nonfiction TBR. Funny enough, Kate ended up DNFing it because she couldn't connect with it, but I really enjoyed it. So this book was really interesting. There was definitely some parts that were more interesting than others. So the first part of the book talks about Louisa May Alcott's life and how different parts of her life are seen, you know, in her work and especially in Little Women and what characters were based on real people in her life and this was a little interesting though I think it's kind of ruined the image of Mr. March for me because he was based on her father who was very idealistic but ultimately not a good father and husband and he would abandon his family for months at a time. We see that Marmee is a much more idealized and more fulfilled and happier version of her mother so like in the sense it's kind of like Marmee is everything her mother wanted to be so a lot of it is a little dark <laughs> and it kind of might have you view the characters a little differently. The next part of the book, I wasn't a huge fan of, but I understand why it needed to be there in a book that's about the story of little women and cultural relevancy. And in this part, she talks about every adaptation that's ever been done of little women and how people responded to it and what reviewers were saying about it and if it stayed true to the spirit of the book. I understand why this part needed to be there in a book about little women and its cultural relevancy to this day. Adaptations are a big part of that. The way this part was set up, it was just a lot of kind of synopses and a lot of just quotes taken from reviewers and it just it wasn't that engaging. Another section of this book that I found absolutely fascinating and I was really wondering what she was going to say going into this book are how the different waves of feminism have interpreted Little Women because a lot of people claim Jo as a feminist icon who you know didn't bow down to the ideals of her day uh, but a lot of people say that this book is very moralistic and it was really interesting because the author definitely did take the point that Little Women is a feminist work for its time so it was very interesting. She quoted a lot of articles. I could tell she really did her research. And then one of the last parts of the book I loved which was do we have a Jo March for today? Jo March is just one of those characters that a lot of women who grew up with the book say she was an inspiration for me. Do we have characters like Jo March today? And one of the characters that she decided is a modern day Jo March was Rory Gilmore and as a big fan of the Gilmore Girls I loved this and one funny similarity so while Louisa May Alcott was writing Little Women you know this was released in is it called serially it was released in parts and people kept writing to Louisa May Alcott saying like oh is Joe gonna marry Lori is Joe gonna end up with Lori and Louisa May Alcott herself was a spinster and she really just wanted the character to be alone and just have a successful career but people kept begging for Joe to get married so in the end she did marry off her character in a way that was a little less than satisfactory and much like Louisa May Alcott, Amy Sherman Palladino constantly got asked if she was like team Dean, team Jess, or team Logan and she would always respond with like why can't it just be team Rory? Why does she have to be defined by these men in her life? So I thought that was just a really funny similarity and then of course she talked about the ending of the revival where Rory writes a book about their experiences and Rory being this kind of strong bookish female character. So, so this book was very interesting and it's helped me put a lot into perspective and especially since I plan on rereading Little Women next year, I'm really excited now that I kind of have a different context for it, what I'll think of it. So that was Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, The Story of Little Women and Why It Still Matters by I think Annie Boyd Rue. So the next book that I read was a novella and a translated work and this was Such Small Hands by I think Andres Barba and it was translated by Lisa Dillman. This was categorized as horror and it is horror but it's this very subtle literary horror that I think sometimes work but sometimes I think misses the mark and this time unfortunately it missed the mark for me. This follows the story of a girl named Marina. She's a very young girl around seven years old and both of her parents die in an accident and she is sent to live at an orphanage. 
we get stories from Marina's perspective and then we get a stories from a collective perspective of all the girls at the orphanage and how they become fascinated with Marina. Her and the girls play this game called Dolls at Night when all of the nuns are sleeping and it has some dark consequences. I mean the events that transpire in this story are a little horrifying and even more horrifying is that I was reading I think it was either in the introduction or the afterward that this was based on a real thing so keeping that in mind what happened was like creepy and awful i just think this was a little too literary and a little too focused on like the the prose and the poetic quality to it i just wanted a little more from the ending i kind of felt like i was left hanging and as someone who is pretty okay with ambiguous endings and I wouldn't say this is an ambiguous ending it's pretty cut and dry what the implications are and what's going to happen I just think the way it was done I needed a little more from it and I needed a little more from the girls I needed just a little bit more all around so that was Such Small Hands by Andres Barba. The next book I read was a collection of short stories called Greetings from Moon Hill and this was written by Anthony J. Rapino. So the author emailed me and let me know about his book which I ended up just getting on Kindle Unlimited because I have that subscription right now and this was really fun. This is about a fictional town called Moon Hill in Pennsylvania and there are a ton of stories from a ton of different perspectives but like one of the things that opens up each part is that there is a small travel paper and there is a woman who is being sent to Moon Hill to stay there and kind of do a piece for this travel magazine. And we also hear from the last, you know, writer slash journalist who was sent there and what happened to him and we get just little notes about just the weird things that he finds there. I personally love the horror trope of like a small town with a secret or like a small town where eerie things happen or a small town that's not quite part of society and everyone there is kind of in on something. A lot of these stories were very atmospheric and very autumnal. Like I definitely felt like autumn is the perfect time to read this book. At first I really liked how like weird and quirky this town was but there are some stories that get dark because I think the first couple stories that I read I'm like okay like this is kind of fun and let's just say there's a whole range of like room temperature and freezer stories in this one and I really enjoyed it. I would say the one part that I like wasn't a huge fan of is the last chunk of the book. The stories all kind of get interconnected into a bit of a novella which for me just didn't quite capture my attention. I was perfectly okay with just the different short stories but I think my favorite one of them was a story about a plumber who goes to people's houses and kind of it's like he knows what people are up to when he goes to do his plumbing. And then there was a story about these three people who are getting together to break into these old people's house and give them a scare. That one really stood out and there was a ton of them. I almost wish I would have read this in a physical format because a lot of the reviews were saying that the physical format is really nice and it has maps on the end papers which I really would have loved. Um, but this is available on Kindle Unlimited if you have that and I had a lot of fun reading it. So that was Greetings from Moon Hill by Anthony J. Rapino. The next book I read was a mystery and that was The Word is Murder by Anthony Horowitz. Last year I read The Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz and I really enjoyed it. In The Magpie Murders he definitely plays with the narrative and it's a story within a story. It's so like a mystery within a mystery. And he also did something that was really interesting in this book. He inserted himself into the story. And so in the book he is writing about being writer Anthony Horowitz and he talks about the real life books he has written and the real life work he has done with BBC shows like Boyle's War. In this story he is approached by this gruff a PI who says hey I think you should write a book about me. I have a, a case that was brought to my attention today. It's about a woman who went to you know a funeral director, planned her funeral, was murdered that night. The character Anthony Horowitz decides to follow this PI around as he goes and works on this case. First of all I have a soft spot for the gruff PI trope in mysteries. And so this character Daniel Hawthorne is I would say almost a mix of Cormoran Strike and Sherlock Holmes. It's like a disgraced detective now working on his own lone wolf with like a good intuition and a keen sense of observation. I really enjoyed the chemistry that they had back and forth. Anthony Horowitz kind of takes on a little bit of a Dr. Watson persona as he follows him around and like tries to keep up with him and like hypothesizes about different 
how it comes to the murder but like Daniel Hawthorne is always like two steps ahead of him and is always like oh but like what about this and this and I really liked their relationship and like their back and forth and I think this is the first part of a series so this is the word is murder and I think the next one is like and death is a sentence. I will say the ending was a little bit of a letdown and because it's something that I've seen before parts of it felt a little formulaic but overall a very enjoyable experience and the last book that I read this month I loved. It was a collection of poetry and that was I am not your final girl by Claire C. Holland. This is horror and so if you're not super familiar with horror tropes, in slasher movies, often the sole survivor at the end of the movie is typically a virginal woman. And, she, and so that's where you get like the shorthand, like the final girl. In this poetry collection, singles out different women in horror films and writes a poem from their perspective. So like the first poem in this book is Rosemary from Rosemary's Baby. And some of these were just so beautiful. This is a very feminist work. I would read these poems and just have to like sit with them for a minute. This is a book I I read this on my Kindle but I need a physical copy ASAP because I haven't watched all these movies. A lot of these were movies I was familiar with and I was familiar with the plot lines but now I want to watch these movies and read these poems and just have even more context but some of these were just so beautiful and powerful. And the way they're split up is each poem, like I said, is from a different character's perspective. So you have like Rosemary from Rosemary's Baby, Lori from Halloween, and May. Like all kinds of stuff all the way down. It was just so well done and I just absolutely loved it. And that is I Am Not Your Final Girl by Claire C. Holland. So anyway guys, those are the books I read in November. Like I said, I will link part one of my wrap up down below if you want to check that out. Thank you so much for watching and as usual if you've read any of these books or if you have any comments or questions about these books feel free to talk to me in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!